again, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon, we would like to welcome you warmly to San Fernando Hill. from Rostel Coffee. Rostel Coffee is a brand from right here in San Fernando, Koki, San Fernando. We come from a family of coffee, coffee and cocoa. And after spending 15 years in IT, I decided to take a modern approach and bring it back to the coffee. And what we have here is coffee grown in Trinidad. We also bring in coffee from Ethiopia, from Brazil, from Colombia, and we blend with our local coffee, and we have single origin coffee from all over the world. So I could show you here, we have some fresh roasted beans, and the thing with fresh roasted beans is that the aroma and the taste is so far superior than coffee that has been packaged for months on a, a shelf somewhere. So what we do is um, we, we roast the coffee fresh and it's freshly brewed as well. So we're here today at the Big Draw and we're serving our freshly brewed coffee. Good afternoon, my name is Richard Blewett, I'm the UN Resident Coordinator for Trinidad and Tobago and I'm very happy to be visiting this school today. Now this school is doing an amazing job raising awareness about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And all these young people are hopefully inspired by the goals and bringing them to life. And they'll take the message home to their families and in the, in the community in San Fernando and, and move the country forward. So it's very inspiring to, to have a chance to be able to visit and to see all the different activities going on today. So I've been in Trinidad four years and I've got one more year. Thank <laughs> you. 
Introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm um, Anthony Lucky, I'm a judge of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea with headquarters in Hamburg, in Germany. And for many years, 16 years, I was a judge of the Supreme Court here in front of the I have come here today because I think that UNESCO, as it is doing all over the world, that I'm happy to be here to see what is being expressed in all the various stations that we see here and further the fact that heritage is being shown as we can see in the very costumes the young ladies are wearing and each one gives a depiction of what we are all about and I think it's an excellent idea that they have used one of our secondary schools as the beginning of what this is all about and I think it's a learning experience not only for young people but for us even at this time because we continue to learn until we die put it that way because it's a learning experience and we don't know everything and we continue to learn more and more each day anything else you need <laughs> Good afternoon. We are here from SJC's Victor 2017 and we are posing as different folklore craft. So we have Papa Boa, who's the father of the forest. We have a Chirio. She is the ghost of a dead pregnant woman who had a miscarriage. And well, she goes around to find abused pregnant wives and curses their husbands and takes the wives' children. We have a larger breast who basically she lures drunk men into the forest and she kills them. We have Mama Glow, who is the mother of the water. Who is it? Mama Glow. Mama Glow. Mama Glow. Who is it? This is the area where we're going to start a program. Can you just And we have the Dwell, who is an unbaptized child who died. And I am a Sukunya, who is basically a fireball, an old lady. Hey, everybody, <laughs> no, move the mic, move the mic. I'm going here. I locked that off already. <laughs> to bow your heads. Sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, may your goodness and love be present amongst us today. Come bless our gathering with unity, 
and a vision and build in us all a deep respect for one another and all your creation. Lord, you have entrusted us as stewards of your creation. Help us to seek you first in all we do. We ask you to shower blessings on our organizers, our sponsors, our well-wishers, our supporters, and our participants. May we be always mindful of their service. We offer the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Father, give us good weather that today's proceedings may be enjoyable. Bless all those who have already arrived and those who will join us shortly. Protect them with your traveling mercies. Amen. Sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To have invited and to be on the way the following. The Senator, the Honorable Christine Kangaloo, President of the Senate, the Honorable Faris al rawi Attorney General and Member for San Fernando West, the Honorable Dr. Lavel Francis, Minister of State in the Ministry of Education and Member for Maruga Tableland, Justice Anthony Lucky and Mrs. Sintra Lucky, Retired Court of Appeal Judge, and the Judge of the United Nations International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. Mr. Richard Blewett, the United Nations Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative. Mr. Juan Miguel Diaz, Director, United Nations Information Center for the Caribbean Area. His Worship, the Mayor of the City of San Fernando, Alderman Junior Regrello. Permanent Secretaries, Mrs. Joanne Dioraj, Ministry of Planning and Development. Mrs. Angela Sinesui Gervais, Ministry of Education. Mrs. Lenore Batiste Simmons, Ministry of Education. Ms. Susan Sherland, Secretary General, National Commission for UNESCO. Professor Rhoda Redock, Deputy Principal, University of the West Indies at St. Augustine. Sister Annetta Alexander, Chairperson of the Board of Management for Cluny Schools and Provincial Superior of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny. Sister Phyllis Wolf. Director of the St. Joseph's Convent Tobago Retreat and Holistic Development Center, Education Officer of the Board of Management, and former Principal of RSJC San Fernando. Mr. Omar Mohammed, ASP Net National Coordinator. Mr. Ray Braffith, President of United Nations Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Specially invited guests, members of the media, parents, the principal, acting vice principal, the big draw committee, members of staff and students of St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando, welcome you to our big draw celebration 2017. 
It is my pleasure to welcome you this afternoon to St. Joseph's Conference San Fernando Big Draw. I am Mrs. Nadine Joseph Denny, and I am the mistress of ceremonies for this part of the official opening. At this point, I welcome our principal, Mrs. Jennifer Manwaring, to bring her welcome. A pleasant good afternoon, all. All protocols observed. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this, our third installment of the St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando Big Draw. This year is particularly special in becoming a member of the ASPNet Association. We are able to incorporate the 17 Sustainable Development Goals into our curriculum. We warmly welcome our sponsors and those that have partnered with us to facilitate this effort. Once again, I would like to welcome you all, and I do hope that you enjoy all that we have to offer. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Manwaring. We are here together with UNESCO and ASCNet to remind, to celebrate, to call, to mention the notable goals, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. We hope that with our effort here today, we will sensitize you, the greater public, as to what those goals are and as to what you can do in your small or large way to assist this noble effort. At this point, I invite our acting vice principal, Mrs. Deborah East, for the statement of purpose. Please applaud as she comes. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. We are here today to formally launch a novel process that has begun at St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando. A process to equip and empower our students to be drivers and agents of the Sustainable Development Goals. Before 2015, we engaged in teaching and learning some of the Millennium Development Goals in some subject areas and in some clubs, but all in a limited way. With the UN's transition to the SDGs after 2015, we have also changed gears. We are an ASPNet school, we are a Sustainable Development Goal School, and we are in the process of integrating the 17 SDGs into all aspects of our curricular and co-curricular activities. And by that I mean that not only will the SDGs be visible in our classrooms, in our libraries, cafeterias, and at events such as sports day, concerts, etc. Not only will our students learn the information in their subject areas on the goals, but they will also engage in take action projects, becoming agents of change towards the successful achievement of the 2030 Agenda. We therefore aim at creating a global citizen focused on a global agenda. Our purpose here, therefore, is to present to all stakeholders St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando, an ASPNet and a Sustainable Development Goals School. Thank you. At this point, we have greetings. And moving the first set of greetings, I would like to invite Ms. Susan Sherland, Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO. A warm welcome, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Denny. Mrs. Denny. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just start with a few formalities, if you would indulge me. Senator, the Honorable. Sorry. <laughs> I'm guided by the program. <laughs> Mr. Paul Sarwari, good afternoon. <laughs> I'll continue with uh, recognizing Alderman Junior Regrello. I wouldn't continue with all of the titles, but we, we know who they are, so good afternoon. Mr. Richard Blewett, 
colleague, good afternoon, um, Mr. Omar Mohammed, my own colleague from the National Commission for UNESCO, and uh, the principal of and vice principal of St. Joseph's Convent. Good afternoon, my friend, Mr. Ray Braffitt, Justice Anthony Lucky, all the students, parents. Uh, media, family, well wishes. Good afternoon, it's great to be here. I am very pleased to be here again because I was here for the first big draw. Very impressive what I saw, what the students are doing and how they're encouraging others. Today, May 21st, is actually the international or the world day for cultural diversity, for dialogue and development. And what a fitting activity we have here today in the big draw. I think St. Joseph's Convent needs an applause for that. Every year, the UN has, uh, has been celebrating this day to recognize our cultural diversity, have some dialogue and develop. And uh, I think this is a great way to share with others what our UN would want to promote. The lead agency for that uh, World Day is UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. And we at the UNESCO are promoting uh, so the Associated Schools Project, the ASPNet. I think you heard about it a few times this morning, this afternoon. We promote activities under UNESCO's Associated Schools Project Network. It's a network of schools worldwide, thousands of schools, and we in Trinidad and are proud to say that we have a huge uh, contingent of schools in our country involved in this program. The AS Minute actually pro uh, promotes four specific activities and themes, they call them study themes, and very quickly I will say, it's knowing the United Nations system, peace and human rights, cultural diversity, and sustainable development. Now, inter intercultural learning is a huge part of what we're involved in in Trinidad and Tobago under the ASB net. And with the sustainable development goals to 2030, we are particularly interested in goal number four. That's the one that promotes quality education for lifelong learning. So at UNESCO, we are pleased to report that we have these activities in our country. And they report back to us that they are proud to induct more schools into the ASP net. So I want to congratulate St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando for being yet another full member of the ASP net, full and active member, and we could report with pride that things are happening great in our country to uplift our young people. So with those words, I want to congratulate you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Suzanne Sholand. Our second moment of greetings. We have His Worship, the Mayor of the City of San Fernando, Alderman Junior Regrello. We invite him at this stage to the microphone. Thank you for this to say because I feel that um, with friends and family here this evening, but I'm amazed that when we have these functions, institutions and organizations who organizing these functions just just don't get the protocol right. Uh, at this point, it's a pleasant good afternoon, and I wish to acknowledge the Honorable Attorney General, Mr. Faris Alwari, Member of Parliament for San Fernando West, Resident Coordinator of the United Nations and UNDP, Student Representative, Mr. Richard Blewett, Secretary General of the National Commission of UNESCO, Principal of St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando, Mrs. Jennifer Manwaring, Acting Vice Principal, Mrs. Deborah East, National Coordinator, Mr. Umar Mohammed. Teacher Coordinator, Mrs. Deborah Hutchinson. Very distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the arts who are making their contribution this evening, and the lady who sang the national anthem this evening, Ms. Michelle Dorridge. And my advice to those of you who don't sing, regardless of the quality of your voice, make the effort to sing, because in the orchestra lineup, there's some instruments that is not in tune. When you put them all together, they really do sound well. So let's make the effort to sing the national anthem when we do get the opportunity. In light of the shifting paradigm of our planets and national social and economic landscape, the only way forward is that of sustainable development. As the core principle of the Vision 2030 government policy, I must applaud the visionary decision and stance taken by St. Joseph's Convent 
in this decision to join the Association of Schools Network and their mission to assist in attaining the goal four of the National of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. This is yet another starting example, I should say a studying example, of why San Juan remains the pinnacle of education and standard of living in Trinidad and Tobago. The United Nations designated standard for achieving sustainable development is based on 17 sustainable development goals, of which goal four should hold a special place in the hearts of our citizens to ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Dr. Eric Williams, the father of our nation, famously said that the future of our country lies in the school bags of our children. How fitting is it that the students of St. Joseph's Convent, through the guidance of the teachers and UNESCO, have taken up this cause? Your actions today, also supported by the National Development Strategy of the Government Trans Tobago Vision 2030. Under the section People First, nurturing our greatest asset to attain a diversely educated, innovative, entrepreneurial population is a long-term goal of our government for our nation. Your school's decision to ingrain the components of sustainable development into your curriculum represents a quantum step that needs to be undertaken nationally to secure not only the altruistic goals of the United Nations or Vision 2030 or our government, but the longevity of development of our country. Slowly but surely, we all must begin the long journey towards this objective. Level. We must become a society grounded in the principles of social justice. We must lead the charge towards our citizens, family and friends becoming empowered to lead healthy lifestyles. We must ensure that the principles of positive family life is engendered, protected and supported in all our communities. To ensure that these goals are achieved, we must band together in unison. As a mayor of the city of San Fernando, and on behalf of the San Fernando City Corporation, we intend to lend our support in the endeavors to ensure that our city and nation is the better place for future generations. Thank you. Alderman Junior Grello, mayor of the city of San Fernando, for his words reminding us of the focus and the interests and the objectives that are so much at the core of the UNESCO and ASPNET organizations. At this point, we have our keynote address. This afternoon's keynote address will be brought by Mr. Richard Blewett, the United Nations Resident Coordinator and the UNDP Resident Representative. We welcome him warmly to make this most really, uh, an address that we really would like to hear this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Faris Alwari, Attorney General and Member of Parliament for San Fernando West. Alderman Junior Regarello, His Worship, the Mayor of the City of San Fernando. Mrs. Jennifer Manwaring, Principal of St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando. Staff, teachers and students of St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando. Colleagues from the United Nations, members of the media, distinguished guests. A huge congratulations to the school uh, for taking the initiative for being an SDG school. I was just saying to some of the guests earlier, I've been traveling around the Caribbean talking about this school and actually wanting to come to this day very badly. Um, and a lot of countries are showing a tremendous interest in having SDG schools. So this is a fantastic initiative that you've taken. And congratulations. UNESCO has associated schools network partners with member schools globally to promote innovation and quality in education, support international understanding, peace, intercultural dialogue, and sustainable development. By adopting all 17 sustainable development goals, the students and staff are fulfilling their part in helping achieve these goals through their own teaching, learning, advocacy, and training. The students of St. Joseph's Convent will become better equipped with the understanding and tools necessary for creating sustainable development from an early age. This initiative will hopefully give you a hands-on approach 
to tackling the issues facing the achievement of the sustainable development, and passion and scope to create change in Trinidad and Tobago and across the world. So I'm just going to talk a bit about the SDGs. The Sustainable Development Goals are a new universal set of goals, targets, and indicators that UN member states will be expected to use to frame their agenda and political policies over the next 15 years. It is the international community's ambition and ambitious response to today's most pressing global development challenges and will guide our development priorities for an entire generation. If you take for an example, Germany is reporting this year on the SDGs. Actually, they reported last year. This year, the first country in the Caribbean to report will be Belize. Uh, so it's a truly universal agenda. Young people played a key role in, show, in shaping this agenda and experience firsthand many of the issues it seeks to address, such as SDG 1, no poverty, SDG 4, quality education, SDG 5, gender equality, and the list goes on. Formally adopted in September 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly, the SDGs were decided through a bottom-up approach involving everyday citizens such as students and teachers in a global survey to help decide what the world needs to do for the future. This was called My World, the survey, and you can read the results of the My World survey. It really informed how governments eventually agreed on the 17 goals. The entire world has the opportunity to contribute to this extremely participatory process of deciding what the global agenda for development should be. Hence, now we, there is now a further process of engagement going on. Uh, the alderman for San Fernando gave uh, reference to Vision 2030. Uh, just two weeks ago, uh, Trinidad and Tobago hosted a mainstreaming acceleration and policy support mission of the UN to really bring and support the 2030 agenda in the country. Um, and move it into uh, a process of implementation with a roadmap. And we're very, very excited to be working here on that agenda. Recent decades have witnessed significant advancements in terms of human development. But deep challenges remain. Progress has been uneven, with many young people across the world still experiencing interlocking forms of discrimination, limited political inclusion, high levels of poverty, limited access to health systems, and not very good educational opportunities or decent jobs. The goal and targets of the 2030 are interconnected, aiming to integrate the three dimensions of sustainable development, the economic, the social, and the environmentally. Explicitly or implicitly, young people are deeply involved. Uh, this is embedded in their fabric. You often speak to young people and they talk about their environmental concerns. They talk about issues that they face in their lives in terms of bullying in schools. So it's very real, the SDGs. It's not something that's a long way from them. The goals and targets of the 2030 Agenda really now need to be driven forward by countries across the world. And I'm really happy to be here at the St. Joseph's Conference, San Fernando, because you are really showing a bottom-up approach. It's only by involving young people, engaging them to think about the issues of sustainable development, that societies change. Uh, in the region, the United Nations has been working with 18 uh, English and Dutch-speaking uh, Caribbean countries to move ahead a multi-country sustainable development framework. Trinidad and Tobago is one of, of course, of those countries. And we're very excited about working across countries so that different countries can share their experiences. Just to give you an example, last week I was in Aruba and they're having a major problem with their statistics. Um, it's quite a disorganized system. You have a very, very good head of statistics here in Trinidad and Tobago, Sean O'Brien. And so we're going to encourage Sean to go over to Aruba and give them some support to make sure that they can be more organized in their national statistical system. So the exchange between Caribbean countries and beyond 
to sort of find some good practice, learn from mistakes made, is really important. And we, the UN, want to support that. I hope that you can take the message of collaboration and partnership as a key takeaway from today, as only through working together can we have meaningful impact on our peers, our communities, and our countries. So I really commend these parents, teachers and students of this amazing school. I'm going to follow your story very, very closely. I'm going to make sure I can promote it here in Trinidad and Tobago, that we have more SDG schools uh, taking root and then across the whole of the Caribbean and beyond. So many congratulations for your work. I want to thank Mr. Blewett for his encouraging words to our school. And also we hope that his words will also enkindle many of us who are here to find out what an SDG might be and to see how they can impact their world by doing something to help. At this point in our program, we have with us the Honorable Faris al Rawi, Attorney General and Member for San Fernando West, to bring remarks. A last round of applause, please, as we welcome him. Worship the Mayor, the first citizen of San Fernando, and all of the protocols observed. I just did that for him, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be back on the most beautiful spot in Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. the San Fernando Hill. Richard Blewett, now you know why San Fernando and San Fernando West is the top priority of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll be a little informal if you permit me. Ladies and gentlemen, as a young man, I had the great pleasure of being a scout. And in being a scout, I was in the band. And being in the band, I got to play music for March Past for St. Joseph's Convent on a continual basis. Well, that was the treat of any young man's life. Well supervised by Sister Phyllis as she stood next to us to make sure that everything was done just right. I have to say that I have always been an avid supporter and fan of St. Joseph's Convent. And I'm very, very proud. Yes, San Fernando. That's the only one that I could speak about. But I have always been a serious fan of St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando, for its continual leadership in the charge towards excellence. But let me broaden this into the conversation. We have Justice Lucky, and more particularly his boss, Mrs. Lucky. Uh, who has been a teacher for many, many years, dedicating her life in service. So many of us in San Fernando recognize the facts that we don't really boast about. The district, the ward of Naparima and the San Fernando Basin has the highest collection of national scholarships year on year since I was a little boy. San Fernando has produced many citizens of excellence who are humble in nature and dedicated to service. And when one stops to consider why this group of people in this particular city and its environs have managed to do that for so long, it really harkens back to the quality of family life and the quality of community. Because when we come to school, this despite the various backgrounds that we come to school from, there is a level of equality and love and sustainability across San Fernando and all of its schools. And I wish to give a very profound and sincere compliment to the teachers who have dedicated their lives to create citizens of excellence and passion, because without you, we would be nothing as a people. I would like to join in complementing the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, but I want to be very specific and real for the young people of this country. What are the Sustainable Development Goals? Why are they important? We're hearing lovely catchwords like UNESCO and UN and Sustainable Development Goals and Millennium Development Goals, but what does that mean? And how can we make it real? Well, let's be real. Development Goal 1, no poverty. Development Goal 4, Education Focus. Development Goal 5, Gender Equality and Empowerment of Women. Let's be real for a moment. San Fernando West has approximately 4,000 to 6,000 squatters living in our community. 
we have areas of our city. When you walk through the city and you look at the level of poverty and disenfranchisement, you will not believe that you are in the 21st century. No electricity, no running water, the forgotten in a timeless zone. As a member of parliament that has walked every single street of this city, I can tell you that it's real, it smells real, it feels real. There is a level of desperation amongst us. And I'm very pleased to be able to tell this grouping today and the national community by extension that the cabinet of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago approved the waterfront development project which bites into a large part of the issues associated with development goal number one, that is no poverty. In dealing with that march ahead of the waterfront development, we will be dealing with the squatting communities at Hatter's Pan Yard and right around the back behind the Labas, as we call it, at the waterfront area, which includes the wharf, in a social interaction and survey with responsibility. Imagine the creation of a place that involves entertainment, business, beauty, much like the San Fernando Hill. I recall being on this San Fernando Hill when it was opened, when my mother opened it. And the kind of work we did here to develop the San Fernando Hill as a scout working on this hill right there at Presentation College. But this anchor point for development at San Fernando is associated there. Let's be real a little bit further. And I want to talk about gender equality and empowerment of girls and women. You will note that we have been very, very careful to pick up a conversation which has been going on for 26 years. And that is the abolition of child marriages. Child marriages are a feature of the laws of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. As a result of that, we had direct discussions with the young people of Trinidad and Tobago, including the leading persons in society that deal with gender equality and the rights of women. And I'm very pleased to say that the final debate on the child marriage um, abolition legislation, if I put it that way, is due to be concluded before June of this year. And that will be something which will take care of 26 years of analysis paralysis. And I make a plea to the young ladies of St. Joseph's Convent to make their voices known on what they wish to be heard in that discussion. I'd like to also compliment, while I have him here, Richard Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the United Nations and the UNDP in particular that has been the pioneering partner of Trinidad and Tobago in the operationalization of a first of its kind, the Children and Family Division Court. We took the legislation to Parliament we created the Children and Family Division Court for the first time in this country's history. We amended 80 pieces of law to deal with gender inequality, to deal with children's rights, to deal with the children's authority, to deal with the access to justice and the appropriate environment for it. But the UNDP, with Richard Bloat leading the charge, made sure that we as a government were able to operationalize at the same time that we legislated, which is why we have secured the buildings for the courts, which is why the staffing structure has been approved, which is why we are now hiring the people for it, which is why we are able to take what would normally take 10 years of work and do it in one and a half years. And I wish to thank the UNDP, the United Nations, Richard Blue, and the people of Trinidad and Tobago for getting the job done. No more analysis paralysis. Let me end now, not being the feature speaker, <laughs> but you put a politician and a lawyer in front of a microphone and things happen, by saying how proud I am of the Sustainable Development Goal inclusion, how proud I am of St. Joseph's Convent, that I intend to broaden the advocacy for more schools to join, and I'm convinced that San Fernando will be leading the way in the number of schools that join on 
to treat with these issues. We have the president of the Past Students Association for Presentation College, Mr. Stephen Samlal Singh, with us, even though his boys go to Naprima College. Um, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I have to make sure you're listening, Stephen. And I'm sure that Presentation College will be following suit, as will Astra, as will Pleasantville, as will St. Benedict's, as will all of the many schools that we have in San Fernando. Because if you don't start teaching it, and making it real from now in simple ways like ending the abolition by leading the abolition for child marriages to end by making sure that poverty ends by looking at equal access in our schools through participation if we don't start here we're missing the boat thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and what a beautiful day today is congratulations again to all the promoters of this event thank you Thank you to our Attorney General and member for San Fernando West, the Honorable Farah Sarawi, spoken like a true San Fernandian. Yeah. It's very gratifying to hear your praise of our school. I was waiting for you to mention your school, Presentation College, our favorite boys' school as well, still is. That's our school as well, our brother's school. I quite uh, enjoyed Mr. Arawi's words concerning opening our eyes and looking around us, using all our senses. He spoke about the smells, the sights. Open our eyes to what's going on all around us. In the midst of the beauty of this hill, we are here to promote a very meaningful course. These SDGs have been around for a while. The Millennial Goals were first brought forward to have been achieved by 2015. Then they were pushed back again. Our world is getting smaller and smaller. Some would even say more violent. As I look at our students, I urge you to be a part of this world that would have a voice and that you would use your voice as an advocate for a good cause. At this point, I invite Mr. Omar Mohammed, the ASPNet National Coordinator, and he will be inducting St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando into the ASPNet officially as a member. At this point, I would also like to call Mrs. Deborah Hutchinson. She is the teacher coordinator for ASPNet and a member, if not the uh, chair of this committee that brought forth Big Draw 2017. So Mr. Mohammed and Ms. Oh, Hutchinson. My partner in crime in this initiative. Um, well, first of all, I would like to bring greetings to the Honorable Farah Rawi, Member of Parliament and Attorney General, and say I take umbrage at all this presentation college. So because I am a Naprimo uh, old boy, oh, so I'll throw that out. <laughs> Alderman Junior Regalo, His Worship, Mayor San Fernando. Our colleague, Richard Blewett, Resident Representative for UNDP and the UN Resident Coordinator. My colleague, Ms. Susan Shailand, Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO. And of course, our principal and vice principal of St. Joseph's Conference, San Fernando, and all our wonderful students and staff and parents and families who are here today. And I want to say special thanks to Ms. Deborah Hutchinson, who has really been the life force behind this initiative, this and many others to drive St. Joseph's Conference, San Fernando, to really the pinnacle of what an ESPNet school is supposed to be. And before I formally welcome St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando into the fold, I just want to point out what exactly an ASPNet school is. As Susan mentioned, it's a global network of school, one of the oldest networks in UNESCO's history, 1953 is when it was established. And its primary goal is to fulfill UNESCO's main ambition, which could be easily encapsulated in a preamble, a little sentence in UNESCO's preamble, it says, since wars began in the minds and hearts of men, it's in the minds and hearts of men that the defenses of peace ought to be constructed. And UNESCO schools really are meant to be the tool to do that. 
to do a whole school approach to making the world a safer and more peaceful one through targeted approaches, targeted projects, and really building the ground up um, from our students who will then become our leaders and the future generations. And if we really get that idea of peace as the foundation for the SDGs and all the other targets that might come up, peace is really the fundamental goal that makes all of these things possible. And, uh, and ASPNet School takes that charge as a whole school approach, not just a project here and there, or one teacher doing something once a year, but a running thread through all the activities of a school. And St. Joseph's Convent really is a pioneer in Toronto Tobago and taking that on board. And we really hope that it serves as a model, not just for Toronto and Tobago, but for our region, Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as schools around the world. So I would like, we, have, we were supposed to have a flag, um, it's still being made, so <laughs> I would just like to formally congratulate St. Joseph's Convent again for this wonderful initiative, and also to Ms. Deborah Hutchinson, teacher coordinator for St. Joseph's Convent, and we hope that this is just the start of a really amazing path for the school and San Fernando as a whole. So thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed. And of course, a big thank you, of course, to Ms. Hutchinson, who has been really the driver behind this this past year. And as we go on with the next four years as an ASPNET, ASPNET school, we hope to hear great things from all our departments. At this point in the program, I would like to invite our acting principal, Mrs. Deborah East, and she will move a vote of thanks. Alastia, applause again, please. Thank you. Once again, all protocols observed. Good afternoon again. I would like to take the opportunity to extend sincere thanks to all who made today's event possible. Thank you very sincerely to the City of San Fernando, to the, His Worship the Mayor, Alderman Junior Riccarello. I'll tell you that the city has been on board with the school and uh, the mayor himself visited the school uh, maybe two weeks ago, and when the students began the, the program of developing uh, icons and emblems and symbols and doing the paintings and the activity that the Form 3s were doing to do some work for, that would be uh, displayed at the United Nations uh, Information Center. And his, his worship, the mayor himself, visited and interacted with the girls. And so we thank the city even for the support for today, where they provided the shuttles up and down the hill and so on. And we know that we have a commitment that will continue. So thank you very much. We thank the United Nations Information Center, all of the arms and bodies of the United Nations present in Trinidad. Mr. Omar Mohammed has been our point person from the ASPNet as the national coordinator. And he says that our, our school coordinator, Ms. Hutchinson, is a force of nature, but he's also a force of nature. Because it is really through their consistent, uh, focused efforts that all that we are seeing today, all of that is possible. We thank the Member of Parliament for taking time off from, I know what is a very busy schedule, we say that all the time, but we know that it is so, to be with us here this afternoon. Thank you to all the members of government and parliament and the judiciary who has graced us with their presence today, to the members of the Board of Management of the St. Joseph of Cluny, to representatives of the Ministry of Education who have been present with us this afternoon. Thank you as well to all of our sponsors. There are quite many. We won't list all of them. They are on the program. And thank you sincerely to the media for being present. We thank you for taking the time to be here with us. And we trust that we will continue to build a relationship with you. I know that we were looking forward to the feature of, of Mr. Blewett. And it, you did not disappoint, sir. We thank you very much. We know that you had an entire region to look after and that you took the time to be with us today. Thank you to all of our parents, members of staff, and all who came today to make today's event possible. I trust that we will have, continue to have a wonderful afternoon. Just to let you know that we have a tea at the main building. You're invited to join us as well for tea and to take part in all of the activities on the hill. 
Thank you very much, everyone, and may God bless us all. I would like to direct you, with the help of the snows, to direct us all to the rock on my right, where there will be a reenactment of the legend of the San Fernando Hill, and that will be put on by our theater arts department with Mrs. Roxanne Kalicharan Figura and her students. Thank you very much. We are involved with this Guinness Book of World Record event in Skinner Park. We are involved with this Guinness Book of World Record event in Skinner Park. And your name is Richard Blewett, I'm the UN representative. And we're going to do something with the UN on that event. Okay, thank we're going to partner you. Thank you very much very, very excited to do for that. collaborating well, with you. us. And it's so exciting. Oh, yeah. yeah. So take a good photo. All your cam. Bring the camera right here. Take a good photo shot right. with them. Picture me, picture me. This guy here broke the world record at 11 months. He was a two way to the steps. So we are taking a photo with the youngest people.
Are you looking for you? I don't realize after this, after this. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Iteration of the legend of San Fernando Hill. from the tribe, he built the first canoe and fled with two women to the San Fernando Hill, where all three reside in exile. Of the 1900s, 
the Warraus made an annual pilgrimage to the hill. Ramuta, how old are you? Nine years old, is going to give 
a weapons demonstration. So the weapon of his choice is the commas. So everybody give Shivesh a big round of applause.
where we be, how much, whatever, if you can sign up. Feel free to talk to me or any of the other kids. So let's give the kids another big round of applause. Alright, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.
This is what we call Pui Trees in Bloom a la Trinidad Tobago. Beautiful. 